some customer engagement opportunities of uh, typical B2C retailing uh, are not probably available to OEMs uh, like John Deere. Uh, I think there's a huge, again, range of data and uh, digital technologies, right, that can be incorporated for personalization and so on. Uh, so what has been your approach, uh, Cynthia, to data and analytics in e-commerce space? And how do you balance the short-term needs against the long-term uh, technology or data strategy? Yep. So I think in general, if I have to summarize what is the approach for data and analytics, right, is how can you leverage data to be a butler, whether it's for your customers or for your stakeholders. Now, uh, at John Deere, we treat data as a product and we do operate in an agile way uh, when we treat data as a product, right? So whether that is descriptive need, that, whether that is an ad hoc request, that is an experiment, data science, et cetera. Now, how does that ladder up to like the data and analytics strategy that we put together? So when we start working on e-commerce, we identified how can we mature from a digital data and analytics perspective? And we put together a digital analytics uh, maturity model that focuses basically on uh, the different domain of data and analytics, right? So from a robust engineering infrastructure to a robust and advanced descriptive analytics, moving to more diagnostic, predictive, prescriptive, and um, more optimization as well. So, um, and then we looked at, you know, thin slicing, which is part of, you know, operating on the agile. So how do we thin slice all of our needs into smaller data product or, you know, minimal viable slices to deliver immediate value to stakeholders and customers while laddering up and maturing our analytics uh, within e-commerce. So we've had great success in, you know, delivering value quickly by thin slicing, but also all of that is an added and incremental value into maturing analytics for e-commerce. Um, and really like when I think about it, like our five core pillar in analytics, analytics are, you know, like I said, robust engineering, right? So how do you make sure that you have a strong infrastructure, data is available, accessible, uh, the advanced descriptive, and that has to do with like building dashboards, building ad hoc requests, doing some, uh, you know, some diagnostic analytics. We have a big focus also that uh, we're doing now on data science. So everything from, you know, machine learning to uh, correlation analysis, statistical analysis, et cetera, and personalization also a big focus for us. But the last and pillar that I um, usually talk about is automation, right? So you can build the most advanced models, you can build everything, but if it's not automated, it's, you know, it, you're, you're lacking there. So uh, we really invested in our uh, data analytics and engineering resources. And uh, so far we've been on this journey for a little over a year. And uh, yeah, I'm really proud of the team and how well uh, we're climbing up that maturity model. That's awesome to hear and kudos on the journey, uh, Cynthia. Um, and I, I, I could totally relate to how you uh, spoke about, you know, showing the value uh, early with minimum viable slice and then build on because who has patience these days, right? 